Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you the battle group preview for the 20th Panzer. Please remember everything you are about to see is still in beta and therefore subject to change. So the 20th Panzer is actually the first B tier division that we've seen so far. But for this one I've chosen Maverick for my deployment type. Let's have a look at the units we've taken. So starting with the recon tab, we're going to go through all of the units available in this particular division as usual. First of all, we have the Aufklader, four of those unvetted in phase A. They've got SDKFZ247Bs, which is an awesome little armored car here. Pretty damn quick, also has an MG. Now the Aufklader in this particular division have a ton of choices for their mode of transport. You can bring them in with Kettengrads, you can bring them in with Schwimmwagens, which actually have an MG, so this will be a vehicle that you can continue to use throughout the game. And then you can also bring them in with even captured Russian trucks, and there's a few units that could make use of those if you wanted to. But in general, I think the SDKFZ247 is the best bet in this case. Next up, we have the Aufklader. Panzer 3M. This is the first Panzer 3 we've actually seen in Steel Division 2, but the 20th Panzer does have some more of them, so we'll get to them later. But the Panzer 3 it has 150 millimeters of penetration on its APCR shells. It's got 54 standard AP shells with 100 millimeters of penetration, and then your standard HE, which isn't too strong on this particular tank because of its small caliber. Got 70 millimeters of frontal armor, which is okay, nothing special, and I would say that's pretty much the best way to describe the Panzer 3s in general, is nothing special. Get three of those in phase eight. You can bring them in with two star veterancy in phase A, but no other choices otherwise. Other choices in the recon tab just include the motorbike and then the Speerthroop, and that is pretty much it for the recon. Moving on to the infantry tab. You can see that I have a card of the 12 Ostrupen. These guys are pretty good for helping you hold the front line. They are more or less exactly the same as they were in Steel Division Normandy 44, just frontline supplements. They have limited amount of ammunition and they do automatically run away if they get pinned down because they are disheartened. So bear that in mind. Then we have a card of the Panzergrenfuhrer. These are fantastic compared to the other command units because they have smoke grenades which allows them to keep themselves alive and I think survivability for command infantry is most important over anything else. So the Pioneer Führer here they have the HE grenades and the Panzergrenfuhrer uh, with the Panzerfaust don't have smoke grenades so these guys are definitely the best in my opinion. Then we see a card of the Pioneer DP these guys have exactly the same weapons, more or less, as the Sapere. They've got two per push, seven SVTs, the DP, and then they have some HE grenades. So they work in a, in a similar way. They can do close range and medium range engagements quite well, and that's what I use them for in the early game. But for more, de more decent close range infantry, I've got Stern Pioneers. But because there's a limited amount, you kind of got to make up for them with the Pioneers there. But these Stern Pioneers, they've got five MP40s and a Flammenwerfer. They are king at 100 meter range. But don't let them get caught out in the open. They do have some smokes to keep them alive for a little while. But if they're too far from cover, they will just die very quickly. In phase B, I have some Panzergrens to supplement our medium to longer range engagements due to the two MD42s. These guys also have Panzerfausts, so if anything rushes towards them, they do have some lethality against armor. Then we have the Sturm Pioneers. These guys come in half tracks in phase B, eight of those. And again, Kings at close range, but as you move through the game, you're going to need the armored transport to get them to those places because any form of stress does unload a unit. Now that's not so much of a problem for a Panzergren because the Panzergrens can engage at 750 meter range so it might not be as much of an issue. But with the Sturm Pioneer because they can only ever engage at 100 meter range, it, they, they're pretty much useless if they get unloaded miles away from where you want them. So having them in half tracks, a little bit more protection is quite nice. 
And in phase C, we have 18 Panzergrenz with Panzerfaust in half tracks. And these are just for staying power, really. In the late game, this division is really lackluster. So these guys will just be there to try and hold the line as much as possible until you've hopefully won. Otherwise, you will probably just end up losing anyway. Other choices in the infantry tab are the Fel Gendarmery. These are your four-man MP40 squads. You've got some Urzats in there if you like throwing bodies at the enemy. You got some Stossthrop. These guys have three per push, two MP40s, and the smoke grenades. So pretty decent close-range infantry actually, but their lack of numbers compared to units like the Pioneers um, does make them lackluster in comparison. Then you got the BMW bike. We've already mentioned the Pioneer Führer and the Panzergrenfuhrer with the Panzerfaust. And we've also covered the Panzergrenz, although you can bring in Panzergrenz without the Panzerfaust for a little bit cheaper if you want to. Moving on to the tank tab. Now this is the main reason that I use this division as Maverick. It's because there actually isn't many, if any, heavy tanks in this particular division. And I believe that is due to mostly historical accuracy. So it mainly relies on Panzer IV. So let's just quickly go through the cards. First of all, we have the six Panzer IV Gs in phase A with no veterancy. Compared to the Panzer IV Hs, these guys have more speed, but less armor, and they have one less machine gun. They're slightly cheaper because of those differences. Then we have the Panzer T-34. These are the slightly stronger T-34s, obviously captured tanks from the Russians. And they're decent. They've got the 100 millimeters of penetration. They're quite fast. So nice in the early game for flanking maneuvers. Then we have this bad boy, the Boiter Stalin. So this is obviously a captured IS-2 and it does have exactly the same stats as a standard IS-2, 170 millimeters of frontal armor, 200 millimeters of penetration, and you're going to want to make sure that this bad boy is on the field in the early game. It will do you a lot of favors uh, to sort of work around this early on, because there won't be much that can really stand in your way other than an enemy IS-2. Then moving into phase B, I have 20 Panzer 4 H's across two cards here. As I mentioned, they are slightly different to the Panzer 4 G's. They have two MG's rather than one, which is nice for closer range infantry support. And on closer range, un closer range engagements, like on the sides of Orsha North map, um, Panzer 4's can win out quite well indeed. So that's something to consider. Now, other choices in this division include the Panzer 3 L. Panzer 3Ls do have those APCR shells that have 150mm of penetration, which is quite nice, but you just don't have enough of them, and therefore they don't seem to perform as well as I'd like in order to add them to the division. Then we have the Panzer IV Führer if you need some extra command, and command is something that's actually pretty scarce in this division, but I've been trying to work without it as I've been testing the division, so... Yeah, it's up to you whether or not you want to bring more. So because you are mainly reliant on medium tanks with this division, make sure that you do rely on either Vanguard or Maverick deployment because if you get into the late game, your Panzer IVs will be outmatched by most enemy tanks and that can be a real bad place to be in. So make sure you try and win early or at least try and get a decent advantage early and then hold on for dear life in the late game. Now we have the support tab, and to start off, I've got a card of the Flammenwerfers. We get nine of these in phase A. You can only bring them in in phase A, it just depends on what veterancy you want to bring them in, and we're using the BMW bikes to get them to the front line. Great for supporting things like your Ostropen in close range engagements, uh, and also the Pioneers. Next up, we have the Panzer 3N, new unit to still division. Panzer 3 with a little stubby gun, 75mm, generally used as an assault gun 
for infantry support. So that's what its purpose is. Pretty cheap, honestly. But I think its HE maybe needs a little bit of a buff. So I would wait until it gets buffed up a little bit to use this. But I've just been trying out all the new units to see how they work. And honestly, I think this could be pretty damn useful for its cheap cost. And we have the commander in phase A. I bring these guys on the Kettengrad just because it's hilarious. And yeah, they don't really need to get to the front line very quickly because otherwise I would use something like a Kubel because Kubel's a little bit faster on road. But yeah, the Kettengrad's always nice. And we have uh, some Opal Blitz munitions. How much supply you need depends on how much artillery you choose to take. Uh, bear in mind that you might be relying on artillery quite a lot with the 20th Panzer because your tank tab is quite lacklustre. And we have the Panzer IV F1. This is basically very similar to the Panzer 3N in that you have a assault gun with the 75mm. Its HE value is pretty decent. Well, it's only one at the moment. Probably could use a bit of a buff. Uh, but overall, cheap cost for what it is. It's not too bad. In general, uh, what I'd probably end up doing is replacing one of these Panzers with the Opal Blitz for more supply. That would be the best bet, honestly, here. Then I've all got the uh, Befell Panzer III in Phase C. Um, you could bring in the Half Track in Phase B by the time you guys get your hands on this. Um, this will be available. Then we have the IG-18. This is your standard infantry gun, not too bad. Uh, but not too great either at the moment because of the abundance of armor on the field. IG-18s have really fallen out of the meta and it's quite sad to see, but there we go. There's your IG-18s. We also have some MG-42s with a 1,500 meter range for infantry suppression. There's the Flam Panzers available. These only have 160 meter range, which really sucks. So they do often get picked off by things like PTRDs. So be careful investing too much money into these. A better choice, in my opinion, is definitely the Greeler. It has actually a really decent HE right now and a very strong unit for both long-range and short-range infantry engagements. And there's also the choice to bring in the multi-ammunition for supply, but you don't get as many of them as you do Opal Blitz in terms of overall supply value. So, for example, in Phase B, the multi you can get two of them, which would give you 30,000 supply, whereas you can get six Opal Blitz, which gives you 60,000 equivalent of supply. So yeah, just bear that in mind. Anyway, moving on to the anti-tank tab, we have a card of the Pack 184s. These are captured Russian AT guns, the 45 mil ones, and they have the 95 millimeters of penetration. You don't get any APCR. So, these are fantastic with the efficient shot and they do have a decent rate of fire so they can clean up light vehicles very easily. Next up though we have the absolute meme machine, the derp gun, the Panzerjäger RSO. Now this is a Pack 40 basically on a tractor. Couple downsides, it's on a tractor that's unarmored so it gets killed off very quickly by mortars and tanks and to add to the problem it has bad stealth so it gets spotted easily but it is mobile and it's a lot of firepower for a cheap cost you've got only 35 points a piece for 145 millimeters of penetration it's not actually too bad give these some decent veterancy and you may be on to a winner let's move on to the Panzerstreck squad now the Panzerstreck squad is pretty standard, 200 millimeters of penetration, and it has a 250 meter range. But it comes in with the SDKFZ 251.7. Now this thing has a Panzerbuscher on it, which has 1,000 meter range, and it has 100 millimeters of penetration, accuracy is 60%. So fantastic for close range ambushes, really, and that's what I would definitely recommend using it for. So complements the Panzerstreck very well because it kind of has the same role. Then we have the choice to bring in the SDKFZ 25110s. You guys probably remember these from Steel Division normally 44. Pretty decent for killing off light armored vehicles, but 
other than that, pretty naff. Does have some HE shells, so can provide a little bit of infantry support as well. Plenty of other choices, which are mostly unarmed. But there we go, that's your Panzerstrex. Moving into phase B, I have the Pack 40s, and I'm bringing these in with the SDK of Z7. Reason being is that the SDK of Z7 has a machine gun, which means it won't disappear when it gets unloaded, and therefore you can reposition the Pack 40 with it. And its off road speed isn't too bad at 32 kilometers per hour, so yeah, you can pick up the Pack 40 and move it about nicely. And that's just your standard Pack 40, otherwise, with the 190mm of penetration on its APCR and the 140mm of penetration, 45mm of penetration, sorry, on the AP shells. Finally, in phase C, we have a card of the Pack 43s. These bad boys have 230mm of penetration, but bear in mind they have bad stealth. So you're going to want to bring them in definitely with the SDK of Z7 because you're going to want to reposition these if they get spotted since they will become like magnets for artillery fire very, very quickly. Other choices in the anti-tank tab includes the Panzerfinichtungs, which you can bring in with the Horch. You can also bring them in half tracks, so that's pretty awesome. But their limited availability and the fact you can only bring them in phase A means that they don't really have a place in this division, in my opinion. Then there's the choice of the Marder 1. These are only 45 points a piece uh, for a Pack 40, more or less, on wheels, similar to the Panzerjäger. So you could bring these instead of the Panzerjäger RSO. The benefit being that you've actually got a little bit of armor, however small it may be. Uh, but they have very bad stealth compared to the bad stealth of the Panzerjäger RSO. So at least the RSO can hide in like cover much better than a Marder 1 can. Then we have the FK-288, which is a captured Russian gun. It has 105mm of penetration, and its HE shells can fire indirectly, but yeah, not really a gun that I would recommend picking up. And then if there's way more cards of Pack 40s if you want them. Next up, we have the anti-air tab, and this one's a pretty simple one for the 20th Panzer. We've got the Flak 38 here, the 20 mil, with the SDK of Z11 Flak vehicle. You get two vehicles on one card, and it gives you quite a lot of substantial anti-air in the early game for a reasonable cost. Other transports include like half tracks and so on, but definitely want that second 20 mil. Then in phase B and C, we've got the SDK of Z71s. We get six of them in total across the two phases, and Flagvelings have pretty decent lethality against light aircraft, so make sure you bring plenty of these in and they'll do you a lot of favors. Then we have, as other choices, the Gepard. This is just a 20 mil on tracks. Can be useful for infantry support, but otherwise not much to write home about. There is the option to bring in the Flak 43 37mm for longer range anti-air, maybe for just for doing that little bit of extra damage that may shoot down an aircraft at range, but personally I prefer to rely on the Flak for links. Then of course you have the good old 88s. Unfortunately due to their low availability in Still Division 2, I can't really bring myself to add them to any of my divisions so far, but maybe there will be a division that eventually makes use of them, but for now, not going to make it. Now moving on to the artillery tab, you can see there is a ton of choice, but I'm not actually using much of it at the moment. So this is where I'd probably end up reworking the 20th Panzer if I was ever to like remake the division again. But my choices include the SDK of Z, 251 2s in phase A and in phase B. We get three in phase A, six in phase B. Both cards come with no veterancy. The great thing about these guys is they have 40 shells in the half track. So you don't have to reload them probably through the entirety of phase A. And so you can rely on just bringing in extra supply in phase B. Unless you go absolutely crazy with like chained orders. These should last quite well. 
And the good thing about them is because they come in the half track, they're relatively resilient, so they will survive counter battery much better than a standard infantry mortar. You are, of course, paying a lot more for the privilege, but the fact that they remain alive after counter battery is, is actually really, really helpful, especially if you're not too used to microing your artillery after using it. So that's basically how I've got it set up. These can be really, really effective with corrected char as well. Then I have a card of the Verflammen 40 in phase C. These come in unvetted, allowing us to get three of them. And these are actually very, very powerful at the moment. They fire six rockets and they have two salvos available on the half track. Then you have to reload them with supply. But with 14 damage, and massive blast these can kill tanks if they hit the mark properly so really really awesome rocket vehicle and i've been having a lot of fun bringing those in in the late game you can actually get them in phase a if you're willing to only bring in like one card or like one single verflammen but that will be enough to do a significant amount of damage do be aware they only have 2200 meter range so they have to be pretty close to the front line which can leave them vulnerable to tanks if they're in the open other choices in the artillery. Let's go through all of these. So we've got the uh, Bio Bacta. These guys are your artillery dudes. They provide radios to allow corrected shot on your other artillery pieces. Just sort of as a reminder, corrected shot is faster aiming time and faster fire rate, I believe, on a target that is within the radius of the radio man. Then we have the battery Führer, which are just extra command if you need them to stand near your artillery pieces. They can also give command to any other units. Then we have the standard 81mm mortar with the 3000m range. You've got the 120mm mortar with much more power at 6000m range. Then we have the SK-18, 100mm, 5 damage, unlimited range. Then we've got... Uh, LEFH 18M 105mm. Then we have the Vespa. Vespas are quite nice actually. I would definitely recommend getting a Vespa over, say, the LEFH 18M just because the mobility is definitely worth paying the little bit extra for. Then we have the SFH 18 150mm. These things can actually be very powerful. But again, I would much rather go for the SFH-18 in the Hummel, which has the same firepower, but is self-propelled, so can move out of the way of enemy counter-battery. Like moving after shooting is very important in Civil Division 2, so in general where you can pick up mobile units, I would definitely recommend it. And then finally, there's a half-track that can bring in 220mm off-map, which is pretty sizable. You can bring it in in Phase A. But, yeah, I've not really had too much success with uh, off-map so far in Steel Division 2, so I just don't bring it personally. But maybe you guys want to try it out. Finally, we have the air tab of the 20th Panzer. And we're starting off with a pretty undisputed choice, which is the ME109 G2s. You can bring in three of these at two-star veterancy. Relatively mediocre fighter otherwise, but decent cheap and you get plenty of them with decent veterancy so you can't really complain then we have the me 109 g2 r1s in phase a these come with 250 kilogram bombs great for just causing splash damage that can pin down multiple infantry units at once can also pin down armor if you uh, hit in the right areas like if it blows up behind a tank then it will do more suppression than if it blew up in front of a tank so yeah, worth bringing in for sure in phase A for those cheeky bombing strikes. Then we have the JU-87G. This is something we've all missed, I'm sure, from Steel Division Normandy 44. It has those gun pods with the 140 millimeters of penetration. That is not a bug. That is exactly how much damage they should do because they have an improved AP shell in these gun pods. So very, very strong, can pick up many kills if they are not dealt with quickly, but that is their problem. They are not very quick at all. Uh, 270 kilometers per hour, 
does mean that your opponent will have plenty of time to deal with these, either bringing in their own fighters or anti-air. So you've got to have them covered either by your own anti-air net or with your own fighters. And that's exactly why I'm bringing in a card of the ME109 G6s in phase B. So these are very similar to the G2s, but the G6s are faster and yeah, slightly better in dogfighting. So that's what they're there for. Other cards in the air tab include the Geo 145B, which is a recon aircraft with two napalm bombs, which is quite interesting. Uh, drop these on static targets. You might do a little bit of damage, but don't expect to get much out of those bombs. They're just there for the recon more than anything. Then you've got a couple variants of the Stuka. We've got one with the 250 kilogram bomb and we've got one with a 500 kilogram bomb. So I think that's pretty much the only difference, maybe the speed as well there. Then we have the JU87D5. This has cluster munitions. This is the cluster variant. Pretty cool that we can get three cards of these JU87s all with different payloads. I think that's very, very cool. Uh, but due to their slow speed, again, can be dealt with in due time. Then we have a ME109G2R2 with four 50 kilogram bombs rather than the one 250 kilogram bomb that I choose to use. And then there is the rocket variant, which comes in with the two 210 millimeter HE rockets. Haven't tried this out yet. I'm not sure how effective it is, but I can imagine it's relatively good for dealing with AT guns and other static targets, similar to how I mentioned with the napalm. And that's your lot. That's all of the Air Force. We'll just quickly run over the defenses. I bring the barbed wire. I bring two cards of the MG42s with one star veterancy. And we've got a card of the trenches as well. No gun pits in this one. And that's your lot. That is the 20th Panzer. It definitely relies on providing a big punch in the early to mid game. You can see that's why I put this into a Maverick division. Honestly, it might even be more favoured to a Vanguard deployment because the Panzer IVs do fall off very hard to the mid to late game. And when the Russians can bring in more IS-2s in Phase B, well, that's where you're going to be stuck. You can try and fight at closer ranges with this division. I'm sure it will do quite well. But that's more dependent on your mortar, micro, and keeping your flamers alive as well. If you haven't won by phase C, prepare to strap in for a rough ride. But that's it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the 20th Panzer. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.